Today on The Medicine, I want to talk about the truth about the Epic Game Store and what its impact really means for gaming in totality. Let's get to it. What's up, peoples? It's your boy, MM2K, back again with another one. Yo, before we get too deep into this one, because this is going to be a goodie, this is going to be a good one, do me a huge favor, because I ain't too proud to ask. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, rock those bells for notifications, please, so you know when your boy's dropping these doses, you need this medicine out in these gaming streets, and I appreciate all of y'all straight up. Now, what are we talking about today? We're talking about the Epic Game Store. Yes, the Epic Game Store. Now, if you've been following your boy, you know that I've had a lot to say on various podcasts, various streams that I've did about this whole situation with the Epic Game Store. Now, for those of you who don't know what's going on, Epic, the makers of Fortnite and the Unreal 4 engine, have made a game store to support mainly Fortnite at first, but then they, they've expanded that game store to carry other games. What they're trying to do is they're trying to compete with Steam. Steam is the mega, mega, mega smash PC storefront, right, for games. And, and Steam is credited for bringing PC gaming back. Steam has over a billion users. Epic Game Store, mainly in huge part due to Fortnite, the ever so popular uh, Battle Royale game, has about 90 million users. So in order for them to combat that wide gap of them between them and Steam, they are now exclusively buying games for their PC storefront. Now, a lot of people that hear this, right, are saying, this is great, this is competition. Competition breeds more greatness for gamers. And a lot of them say that not understanding the complexities of what's going on here or what this means altogether or the people behind this initiative at the Epic Game Store. So due to that, lack of a better term, ignorance, they are cheering for something that I know that they don't understand and I am for sure if it's successful for the Epic Game Store is going to lead to a bad result not only for PC gamers but for gamers in general. So let's talk about it. I want to break this up into three parts. You know how I do it. First I just want to talk about the mess which is the Epic Game Store. Then I want to talk about the man behind Epic, Tim Sweeney and why he's a problem. And lastly, I want to talk why this is getting life and breath from the gaming community without their understanding of what's going on and what is fostering this confusion. So first, let's talk why the Epic Game Store is just a mess, period. Well, first and foremost, it just lacks basic features. This is a storefront, people. When you go to any store, right, that has the reasoning and the, and, and the fortitude to even open to the public, there are just basic things that you're looking for. Shelves, you know, cleanliness, things of that nature. So when you translate that to PC gaming and a storefront that's expected on PC gaming, there are big things that are expected if you wanna be considered a mega store. You know what I'm saying? Like if you're gonna exclusively buy AAA games like Epic is doing, some of the favorite of AAA games on the PC forefront, then you're, you're trying to be a mega store. And a mega store gotta have some basic things. First and foremost, cloud saves. PC gamers game on multiple machines. There are no cloud saves on the Epic Game Store. The Epic Game Store right now doesn't support mods. One of the biggest games that are coming at the end of 2019 or the holiday 2019 is Borderlands 3. The modding on games like that is something that's a big draw to PC gaming, and they don't even have the support for mods. Now, they're claiming they're going to get such support, but they don't have it at open, and that's a problem again. Can you imagine someone saying, we're going to compete with Walmart, we're going to be a mega store, and then as you get ready for the store, they don't have anything in comparison to Walmart altogether. All they've done is just open up early, earlier than they should have, and just bought all of your favorite brands exclusively and forced you to go to the crappy store. They don't have any shelves. They haven't cleaned up the floor. <laughs> the bathrooms don't work. The place smells bad. I mean, everything is horrible. The only thing that is attracting you to this store right now is the simple fact that they've exclusively bought everything that you buy. That is not consumer friendly. Then to add uh, injury to insult, 
after spyware with the damn Epic Game Store. They are literally having you install spyware and they're raiding your Steam list to do Lord knows whatever. Or that's all we know about. Lord knows what they're taking from your personal computers. I don't even want to get into the Chinese uh, companies that are invested with, with Epic and those type of implica implications, you know what I mean? I'm not even gonna go there, but it, the list just goes on and on and on as far as problems with this store in general. Next, let's talk about the man behind Epic, Tim Sweeney. Oh, this is this guy is just Mr. Wonderful himself. Tim Sweeney himself is so hypocritical for the simple fact that he made such a big whoop to do when Microsoft was gonna implement UWP, which was supposed to be a system that allows PC development and console development to have the, the gap between the two bridge and make things easier uh, to go to multiple platforms. And a lot of it relied upon their store. Well, upon the announcement of UWP, Tim Sweeney, of all people, jumped up, hair on fire, arms flailing. Hey, this is not consumer friendly. It's forcing gamers on PC to go to one store. That is not what PC is about, is what this guy was proclaiming in so many words. What a difference a day makes. Because what is what is Tim Sweeney doing? He is forcing you to go to a crappy store with all of its Fortnite money. Again, they want to be a mega store with all of its Fortnite money. They're forcing you to go to, the, go to the store, not because it's good, but because Tim Sweeney just wants to have more cash at hand. Another thing I don't trust about Tim Sweeney is, and this is something that was brought up in one of the podcasts that I was on. With a lot of people who are championing this effort by Epic and Tim Sweeney don't realize is that Tim Sweeney was integral in the whole mess between cross-play, cross-progression, Fortnite, and PlayStation 4. But because of his slickness, because of his sleaziness, he made it look like that it was all PlayStation 4 that was behind the debacle. So to explain and to, to, to circle back to that quickly, here's what happened. PlayStation 4 did not want cross-play between its Fortnite players and Fortnite players on other platforms, right? So what happened is, whenever you created an Epic account for Fortnite, as soon as you activated that Epic account on PlayStation, PlayStation delegated and forced all of the things that you've purchased, as far as knickknacks or whatever on Fortnite, to only be playable on the PlayStation platform. But listen to what I just said. After you created your Epic account, Sony locked down the stuff that you bought for Fortnite. But you had to lock it down with Epic's permission, right? Right. So what does Epic do after doing something so grimy? Because we know how PlayStation operates. They've done this with Destiny and Activision and a lot of other uh, third-party publishers. They give them a nice healthy bag of money and say, hey, Help us make stuff exclusive. And the people say, oh yeah, oh yeah. But Tim Sweeney, with all of his sleaziness, what does he do? He says, you know what? I'm gonna play both sides of the fence. I'm gonna take the bag from Sony and behind the scenes, I'm gonna flip on crossplay to make it seem like we really wanted crossplay. We didn't want Sony to do this. And it's the bad, horrible Sony that is prohibiting you from playing with your friends on different consoles. But again, people are not thinking. You're not using your thinking caps, people. Epic had to allow Sony to do this in order for them to lock that stuff down. You have to create an Epic account and Sony does not own that Epic account. So guess who let them do that? Yes, Tim Sweeney. Now, those of you that are just being educated on this whole situation via your boy MM2K are probably thinking to yourselves, well, damn MM2K, if all this is that transparent, why is Epic getting all this praise? And the problem, hey, there's no other way to say it but to say it, is due to ignorance. People who don't understand the complexities of business competition just hear competition, see that competition is occurring, and they say, oh, this is goody, goody, goody for me. But as someone that has had to deal in the dirty, grimy work of the Fortune 500 world for over two decades, I can tell you, all competition is not consumer friendly. Let me give you a prime example. In response to the juggernaut being fearful of NFL 2K5 football game released by Take Two, EA, makers of the Madden series, didn't come out with a better product. They spent a whole bunch of money and bought the NFL license exclusively 
for them to make NFL games, period. To this day, we are feeling the ramifications of EA being able to buy that NFL license and not having to really compete with anybody. We have gotten a very lackluster Madden series over that 15 year period, except for maybe a couple of editions. But I get it, I get it, I get it. Some of you are probably saying, well, MM2K, all right, I, I, I hear what you're saying there, but, but still, you know, competition, this is gonna be good, this is gonna be different. And a lot of that still is coming from the console gamer and the console gamer erroneously is trying to add console gaming logic to a PC issue. Here's the problem with that. PC is a single platform. You've already made your investment into that platform for the openness of it, okay? So all the applications on the store have to be feature based. You've already invested into the single platform, which is PC. There is no PlayStation 4 PC or Xbox One PC or, or Linux PC of those uh, both to the only the Windows PC. There is just PC. You cannot, in a positive way, create a platform where people invest a whole bunch of money. We're talking about thousands of dollars in some cases for an open platform, you close it down and you do not provide what is the staple of PC gaming, which is features, mods, cloud saves, things of that nature. But again, console gamers don't understand that. So let me give it to you this way. Remember at the beginning of this generation, the Xbox One, PlayStation 4 generation, where Xbox tried to move forward with DRM. They tried to shove it down our throats in a lot of people's opinions, right? Let's just say, for instance, while they were trying to do that, and the gaming majority said, no, we don't want this. You know, like how they did at the beginning of this gen. Let's just say if there was a flood of PC people coming over and say, hey, hold on. We've been dealing with DRM for years. It's the best experience ever. You console crybabies, you don't know what you're, you're getting into. Come on, stop. And they were growing in mass and mass and mass to where public perception was siding with the, the PC gamer. GameStop shut down at the beginning of this gen. You can't trade stuff in all that type of stuff, you know what I'm saying? So just imagine if you lost your physical media because of what PC gamers were talking about, right? People that don't even really game on your platform. So just take that whole logic and apply it to what's going on here. You're having a groundswell of console gamers that don't even wanna invest nor even think about investing in the PC gaming experience. Trying to sit here and boost Epic on their shoulders for an experience that they will not support. It's the most ludicrous thing that I've ever heard of in my life, but it's only in gaming that stuff like this happens. Then you have this misconception, right? That, well, Steam is just not being friendly enough. So that's why uh, Epic Game Store is doing this. And Tim Sweeney, with his sleaziness, releases a, a, a false statement saying, if the Epic Game Store were to see Steam do an 88-12 split instead of the 70-30 split, then we would stop doing this and publishers would have to stop coming over to, to our store. That is the biggest lie ever. And it just shows Tim Sweeney's sleaziness. Epic Game Store has 90 million consumers. Steam has over a billion. Okay, a billion, 70% of a billion is, is, is so trumps 88% of 90 million. So do the math, people. It is not the 88-12 split that are bringing people, people over. What's happening is Epic Game Store is giving additional money to these publishers to come to their store. They're giving them more money than they would make on any PC application altogether to cover their losses so they can stay with Epic. Now there's two problems with that. Problem number one is, Epic is not gonna be able to sustain that model. And once they stop paying these publishers this extra money, then they're gonna have to rely on the store themselves. And what are people gonna do? They're gonna go back to the familiar, which is Steam. Again, you don't have the same level of dedication associated to just a store than you do a console you have to make an investment when you buy exclusive stuff on an exclusive console these are just storefronts so because they're just storefronts people are just going to go to their familiar or their preference which is going to be the steam store and don't trick yourself into believing that epic is just going to come out with these features that are going to outdo steam because if that was the case they would have released with those features from the forefront they have no plans to outdo Steam and features. They're just hoping to get mindshare using a console method, which is just a failing strategy. Problem two is, let's just say if Epic Game Store is successful 
if they are successful, then that's not going to make Steam come out with more features because Epic is giving publishers extra money. That's what's drawing publishers to Epic. It is not because Steam doesn't have enough features. So in order for Steam to compete with something like that, guess what Steam is going to have to do? Steam is then going to have to start giving these uh, publishers a whole bunch of extra money too. If Steam starts giving these publishers all this extra money, guess where that money is being taken from? The features that the PC gamers go to the PC gaming experience for in the first place. That helps nobody. And if Epic Games Store is successful with this model, believe you me, they're going to start doing this on the console platform. I don't think it's so far-fetched that Epic would do something like create the Epic Stream Service where they start buying up your favorite multi-plats, you know what I'm saying? That don't have their own streaming service. Start, start giving them a bag and you gotta deal with their streaming service in order to play the game. Streaming is becoming a highly interesting and highly lucrative quote unquote endeavor according to investors. So with that being said, why wouldn't Epic with all of its slimy business practices do something like that? Which again will be to the detriment of all gamers. So in closing, it's so easy in this day and age, and I get it, it's so easy in the day and age of social media to have that herd mentality. But you have to take the time to understand what you're cheering for before you end up cutting off your nose to spite your face. And that's it from your boy MM2K. I hope y'all feel educated. you know what I'm saying? But let me know what you think about what I had to say in the comment section below. Like I always tell you, you can come with me or you can come at me, it don't matter to your boy. But if you like what I had to say, you know where you can find me. You can catch me on the corner of every boulevard. Check out the links below to follow me. Hey yo, I do a show with your peoples. Dirt Griggity, Snow Bunny, Neethals. It's called Scram Punks. Check out the link below to follow that show. It's a fantastic show. We do it every Wednesday, 9 or 9.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And yo, last but not least, check out my brethren, the Broadband Bullies. We're doing it like no other. You will bend the knee. You know what I'm saying? Check out the link to the Patreon. Check out the link to the gear. It's fly. And as always, as always, look, know what's going on in gaming. Increase your gaming IQ and don't follow the idiot herd. And as always, you have a wonderful game.